tonight, the San Antonio ISD superintendent is asking for a billion dollar bond to improve academics and securities, where he expects the money to come from. It's been three years since three tornadoes caused major damage to dozens of homes in San Antonio. We take a look back at that storm. But first, San Antonio ISD students are fighting for change to their Bill of Rights, what they want changed and why. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A group of local high school activists demanding change. The students want changes made to the San Antonio ISD Student Code of Conduct and the Student Bill of Rights. They're concerned about some of the po policing language that's included in that document. Our Tiffany Huertas explains both sides. One of our friends, he was loud at his lunch table one day and a police officer came to address it instead of saying like the vice principal or an administrator and he felt kind of threatened in that way. This is just one of the experiences SAISD students say concerns them. We're not asking to eliminate police officers on campus. We do believe that they are there to play a role in keeping us safe and we do value that, but we do want them to take um, to not act as administrators on campus because we feel like that's how they're acting. A group of students recently shared their thoughts during a school board meeting. The students want to change the student code of conduct and the new student bill of rights, which was implemented for the first time in November. I didn't know about the bill of rights until my friend told me about these meetings. But the chief of external relations for the district says as it started creating the student bill of rights last year, they held focus groups and student surveys. She says they also held several meetings with parents, administrators, and teachers. We've had a code of conduct every single year, but we wanted a document that was more robust and talking about what students wanted. The Student Bill of Rights is a statement of beliefs. There's 10 of them, including the right to a safe, caring, and welcoming school environment. Heard says creating the Student Bill of Rights is part of a broader strategy to implement social and emotional work on campuses. The group of student activists made a request in a letter including adding language about limiting school policing practices and making discipline reports available to the public that include student information, for example, race, age, and school campus, and include the reason for disciplinary action and the actions taken. We're gonna be working from here on out to really continue to look at discipline differently, to train adults to work with discipline differently, and to really look at social and emotional growth as a, a cornerstone of, of our work on campuses. Heard says the district wants students to keep speaking out and keep participating. Our superintendent wants to sit down with the students. We want our, our chief of police to sit down with the students. Students say they are open to these conversations and won't stop until changes are made. We want to be spoken to as equals to them. We don't want to be spoken at, we want to be spoken with. Heard says principals were trained on the new Student Bill of Rights and on changes to the Student Code of Conduct and what resources are available to schools as the district begins to implement its social emotional behavior curriculum. Myra. Thanks, Tiffany. An ethics hearing for the mayor of Leon Valley has been postponed until next month. This is the latest development in the ongoing city council saga there. A complaint was filed by Councilwoman Donna Charles against Mayor Chris Riley. The ethics hearing was set for this evening, but the mayor asked for a continuance because there was evidence against her submitted by Charles just minutes before tonight's meeting. The complaint all linked to a hearing in which former City Councilman Betty Martinez was removed from office over allegations of misconduct. Since then, several lawsuits and recall petitions have been filed. The ethics hearing is now set for March 9th. The mayor is running for re-election. Martinez is also running to get his old seat back. A fight between two neighbors leads to an hours long standoff with police. A verdict in a love triangle murder case now revealed and two police officers on a date night stop a wannabe robber. Here's tonight's nine at nine. A man is dead after police say he set his neighbor's car on fire barricaded himself inside a home and threw a Molotov cocktail at police officers. Police say the standoff began after the man and a neighbor got into a fight Tuesday night. The suspect walked across to his neighbor's house, first breaking the windows on the SUV and later setting it on fire. The man was found dead on a second floor. It's unclear right now how he died. Police say the home belonged to the suspect's parents who were not there when this happened. 
One of the Americans evacuated from the quarantined cruise ship docked in Japan and flown to California has developed the coronavirus. That patient now being treated at a hospital near Travis Air Force Base. In Japan, other passengers on board that ship are finally being released after two weeks quarantine. The CDC announcing a new travel restriction, barring anyone who was on board from entering the country until they are symptom free for another 14 days. Meantime, back here in San Antonio. To date, there's still only one confirmed case of COVID-19 uh, in San Antonio, and the threat to the general public remains very low. Hey, back up from the window. Lean back. Lean that way. A California police officer rescues a man from a fiery car crash. Due to my experience in law enforcement, I know that if you don't act quick, something bad will happen. So that's, it was just instinct. The officer says he could hear someone talking inside the car. He was able to go to the passenger side window, bust it open with his baton, and pull out the driver. Not guilty of murder. That was the verdict coming in late last night from the jury in the murder trial of William Perkins. He was on trial for the April 2017 fatal shooting of 34-year-old Jonathan Ashford, the husband of Perkins' mistress. Perkins admitted to firing six shots, claiming self-defense. Perkins still faces a charge of felon in possession. Two women have died after the car they were sitting in while traveling on a ferry falls into the water in Florida. The car went in the water just as soon as it pulled away from the dock at Fish Island. Divers were out Tuesday night searching for that car, which led to the discovery of the women's bodies. Now investigators are trying to determine what caused that car to fall off the ferry. The ferry was in service today, and workers could be seen putting tire chocks in front of vehicles. San Antonio police are still looking for three men accused of burglarizing an ATM at a Chase Bank on the far west side. Police say the suspect used a truck to yank the ATM off the wall, then used a crowbar and a sledgehammer to smash it open. The million dollar question this whole time has been whether those burglars were able to get any money out of this machine. Because it's been faced down, police weren't able to tell. The truck was found by police ditched right around the corner. Roger Stone has left Florida for Washington, where he'll be sentenced for several convictions in the Russia probe. The former informal Trump advisor was convicted of lying to Congress, obstruction, and witness tampering in the Russia probe. Stone's sentencing hearing is scheduled for tomorrow. Historic flooding in Mississippi is expected to recede this week. The Pearl River in Jackson had the third highest crest on record Monday. Hundreds of homes have sustained damage by flooding, and officials expect that number to reach at least 1,000. The Mississippi governor declared a state of emergency over the weekend in three counties heavily impacted by the water. Date night for recently married Kentucky cops took an unexpected turn when a masked man entered their favorite restaurant, flashed a gun, and demanded cash at the register. Well, I can only see his face and then the employee, and then I saw her hands go up like this. Do you know what I think he's doing? And he's like, yeah. You can see the pair react in an instant, pulling their weapons and taking control of the situation. They held the man at gunpoint until backup arrived. The suspect now in jail, charged with robbery. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. Three years ago today, San Antonio was hit by three tornadoes that tore through parts of this city. The National Weather Service confirmed two of the three tornadoes were EF1s. One of those tornadoes packed 110 mile an hour winds and touched down near Putting Green on the city's northeast side. That tornado's path stretched about 1.4 miles. The other EF1 tornado hit near the quarry area, causing some major damage on Linda Drive. That tornado with winds of 105 miles an hour and traveled 4.5 miles. The third tornado hit between Windcrest and Converse. 43 homes were damaged. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. Yeah, very fortunate indeed. And in fact, our very own Adam Kasky made thermometers from some of the debris from those tornadoes and were able to give those to members of the community. So of course, we don't forget that that happened uh, three years ago today. Thankfully, we aren't going to be seeing any severe weather in our immediate future. Uh, as far as I can tell, we are, however, going to continue to see the chilly weather. Here's a look at what happened today. Numbers wise, 53 degrees was the high temperature, but that high occurred right 
right at about midnight and we spent most of the day right at about 51 50 degrees. And as far as official rainfall goes again, only about a hundredth of an inch of rain thanks to drizzle and passing very light rain showers. Temperatures right now in the upper 40s. It's 49 at the airport, 48 in Bolverde, 45 at Bernie stage, 46 in Lotus. And again, temperatures are just going to coast pretty much over the next 24 hours or so. Right now, winds are not too bad. OK, we've got winds from the north at about 10 miles per hour. But the thing you'll really notice tomorrow is how much those winds will pick up from the north. Take a look at this future cast of the wind gust potential right at about 7 o'clock in the morning. We're going to see another push of very cold air arrive, and that's going to keep our winds pretty strong. Gusts up to 40 miles per hour in some places around San Antonio. And again, that'll keep our temperatures pretty much coasting right in the upper 40s all day uh, during the day tomorrow. We've missed out on the good substantial rain. Unfortunately, that rain is to the north of us, really uh, showing off in areas like Midland Odessa up to the Dallas Fort Worth area out to Arkla, Tex. They're getting some good rain. Hey, good rain is good rain across the state of Texas. We all usually benefit from that. But yeah, unfortunately here in San Antonio, we'll stick with just the drizzle and nuisance -y light rain. Notice the snowfall across parts of Kansas. That's where we've got our cold air up north. You can see it's uh, 18 below up in International Falls. Again, this is the source of that push of cooler air tomorrow. The increase in winds from the north uh, gusting up to 40 miles per hour. So let's take you through the future cast again in the morning. There will be areas of drizzle, maybe even a few light rain showers. Notice that will still only be in the upper 40s. That second push of cooler air is going to keep our temperatures from rising at all tomorrow and we'll just generally be right around 48, 49 or 50 degrees. Really only have your pick of three degrees there tomorrow. Uh, we'll start off with some light rain, windy gusts up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. Then in the evening, we're actually going to get some clearing and that's going to allow our temperatures to really fall by the start of Friday morning. Friday morning will be in the upper 30s, about 37 degrees. We're definitely probably going to have a freeze up in the hill country. To see temperatures rebound, but not by all that much. We'll only be in the low 60s by Saturday. Even on Sunday and Monday, we'll really only top off right at about 70 degrees before we get another push of cooler air. By Wednesday, we'll be back into the 50s for highs. Myra? Thanks, Sarah. We are still digging into the results of the Bearfax KSAT Rivard Report poll, an entirely local project aimed at finding out what our community thinks about some of the biggest issues. Crime was among the top concerns for those people polled. San Antonio police say they get calls for everything ranging from unwanted cats walking in neighbors' yards to murder cases. SAPD says there are things that officers see people do that you can avoid to keep yourself from becoming a victim of crime. Things like don't leave your home or your car unlocked and make sure you take your valuables inside your home with you. And another thing is that we're seeing people that are leaving their keys and their key fobs inside of their vehicles, whether it be in the center console, in the glove box, and they're also making themselves an easy target. Green says no matter how serious the crime, police will always respond, but less serious calls reduce the amount of law enforcement available for more intense crimes. Early voting happening now in Bear County for the 2020 primary, and that's the topic of this week's 2020 elections newsletter. Each Tuesday, we'll email you handpicked coverage aimed at helping voters better understand the races, the candidates, the issues, and the implications. You can sign up for that newsletter on our website, ksat.com slash newsletters. A member of the Tuskegee Airmen living here in San Antonio has died. Theodore Johnson passed away Sunday at his home on the city's east side. Johnson was a veteran of World War II, one of the three remaining documented original Tuskegee Airmen in San Antonio. The Airmen hold a place in history as an all African-American group of fighter pilots. Johnson was known for his detailed memory of travels, his assignments and personal encounters while serving. He was 95 years old. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute.
Here are some top stories from today. Improving academics and securing funding to build better campuses. Those were two areas of focus during the San Antonio Independent School District State of the District address this morning. Superintendent Pedro Martinez is asking voters to approve a $1.25 billion bond in November. Martinez believes revenue from downtown developments will cover the costs. Can't afford your medical bills? Crowdfund it. Millions of Americans already are. A study found that about 20 million people in the U.S. have used sites like GoFundMe to pay their medical bills. Researchers found about 20% of adults have given money to crowdfunding campaigns for the same reasons. The study authors say online fundraisers are gaining popularity because of increasing health care costs, even for those who have insurance. A federal court restored voting rights for 17 ex-felons in Florida today. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals found that denying their rights because of their inability to pay fines was not legal. Florida's Amendment 4 passed in 2018 and allows ex-felons voting rights to be fully restored once they've completed all of their terms of their sentence. 40 women helping other women. That's the main goal of an event that's coming up organized by the San Antonio Business Journal. 40 high achieving women in business will be on hand next Monday for a speed networking event. It's part of the Business Journal's Biz Mentoring Monday event. The mentors come from a variety of different industries. The goal is to think about the future of female led businesses. I'm so excited to see what comes from this for San Antonio. I think that that will be a really interesting perspective is that from this one meeting, who knows what idea may be sparked and who knows what relationship may be made that, you know, we'll see it in the next bond election. We'll see it in the next city council election. So who knows what relationship will come from this. Mentoring Monday happens Monday at the garage at the Pearl from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Tickets cost $45. He helped create the first social network for 311 services, a way for you to report problems in your neighborhood that you want the city to address. But that is not all he's achieved. Beto Altamirano, the co founder and CEO of San Antonio based City Flag Incorporated, is this week's 210 Trailblazer. RJ Marquez shares the story of this South Texas native. <laughs> In this week's 210 Trailblazers, we spoke with Beto Altamirano. He is the first Latino in San Antonio to be named to Forbes 30 under 30 list. He co-founded City Flag, which is a company that connects people to their city government. I went to school in, in Austin. I went to school in, in uh, UT Austin. I graduated with a you know, Bachelor's of Arts in, in Political Science, uh, focusing on innovation in government. And then I went on to work at the White House, the U.S. Senate, and the Texas House of Representatives. And there I saw a, a, an opportunity to have an impact using technology to maybe build something. Build something that would allow you know, people to easily connect with their government, right? As simple as you know, opening up your, your cell phone, reaching out to an app, taking a photo of something, reporting that, and sending that information directly to the city government. But we needed to find a first client. And when we found San Antonio, the city of San Antonio, as a client, they believed in what we were doing. Fast forward, in 2018, we launched uh, 311 SA. We've had tremendous success. We have more than 25,000 users using the application here in San Antonio, and they have generated close to 50,000 city requests. We're putting taxpayer dollars into actually working and fixing the issues of San Antonio. The, the uh, Forbes 30 under 30, how cool <laughs> was just that experience and to be yeah. recognized for uh, is really a pretty distinguished honor. Uh, yes, it's, it is a great honor, right? But I, I, I didn't achieve that by myself, right? I achieved that, you know, with the community that I surround myself, right? With my parents, you know, my wife, uh, my friends, my co-founders, right? That have helped me, you know, you know, create this company that we have today. And the community of San Antonio, they have been you know, very receptive. And so I share that honor or that award with every single San Antonio. If you know someone with an interesting story or a unique San Antonio idea or business, message us on Instagram at KSAT News. For The Nine, RG Marcus. 
Let's go to our website now to find out what is trending tonight with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra, interesting mix of stories today on our website. And we start first with a uh, popular taco spot, taco joint, that is now open at the Pearl. Starting with food is always a good idea. Never Tell a me bad more. idea. Yeah, so this place, Say Town Tacos, Pretty good play on the words there, yeah. <laughs> um, interesting, it's gonna be, it's now open at the bottling department there okay. at the Pearl, so of course you always have like a different mix of options there for you. But um, this place kind of specializes in all these sort of like small dishes, oh, a la nice. carte type stuff. So yeah, I think it works out pretty well for people that maybe uh, don't want like a bigger lunch or a heavy yeah, lunch. Yeah, good option yeah. for lunch. Yeah. You know I still have not been there yeah. to the food hall. What? Never been. <laughs> Okay. Walked past we it, need to go. but never have actually yes. eaten Let's there. add this to all of our road trips I know, that we right? keep talking yes. about. Okay. Um, even better though, the prices are pretty uh, pretty cheap, I guess. Not very expensive. Three to four dollar plates. So that is also Not pretty cool stuff there. Yeah, so you can check out more information there on our website. All right, moving on here. And uh, we're sticking with the food theme because ah, this yes. is very exciting. <laughs> A it lot is. of people. <laughs> I saw this on Instagram, I uh -huh. think. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so, Bill Miller's will now be at Wolf Stadium. Yes, you can now get your sweet tea with your, uh, what is it, Cracker Jacks, Cracker Jacks and peanuts and all and that your stuff. your hot dogs. There you go. <laughs> and brisket. <It's, laughs> it all just seems to go together. Um, so, yeah, this is cool. This is going to be kind of a, an interesting thing that Bill Miller's doing. It's their first sort of a satellite location. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so remember, they have all the restaurants, but this is the first one that you're going to obviously be able to get I didn't in realize stadium. this was a first for them. So yeah. do they have a presence at AT&T? They so do not, no. They don't. And I okay. think that's kind of uh, when you go to a lot of these new arenas and stadiums, you see a lot more of these like popular restaurants yeah. instead of just like the, the regular big chains, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that are everywhere. Uh, yeah, AT&T okay. Center you mentioned has like Whataburger, La Gloria is also there. Yes. So yes, this makes sense here. So uh, yeah, next time you're at a missions game, you'll be able to get yourself some uh, some brisket, maybe a po' boy. Yeah, All right. there, <laughs> there you go. You go. <laughs> All right, uh, sticking now, moving to food and sticking with sports. <laughs> I'm gonna be a little self-indulgent here and uh, basically talk about our Spurs newsletter. If you guys have not subscribed, check this out. So um, we do this weekly, and so something you craft you yes, put together yeah so we okay. kind of get to play with a bunch of different topics with this newsletter it's not very much just like x's and o's or on the court stuff because if you've seen the spurs lately <laughs> then you know that is kind of a disaster we don't really want to talk <laughs> about the x's and o's right now yeah so um, let's talk about some other stuff there we go yeah some stuff that we have in this week's newsletter is uh patty mills went back to australia to help out with uh, the wildfire victims there so pretty cool stuff with patty we have some like really neat photos in there of him like playing with little like ah. Baby so, koalas, yeah, oh. you can't go wrong with that. And uh, also a fun thing we do is uh, this little segment we called Where in the World is Manu Ginobili? <laughs> Since he's like the most interesting man in the world pretty much. <laughs> um, and I linked back this week to a uh, to kind of a throwback when Manu was in the All-Star Game with Tim Duncan. Oh, very cool. Kind of makes you sad <laughs> to know that these guys were with them. It's a little tear. Yeah, tear. But uh, check that out on our website and make sure to subscribe to uh, all of our newsletters. We are happy to Good indulge stuff. you yeah. here. That's Thank a cool, first newsletter yeah. is a cool thing. So that is uh, what is trending. All right. Thanks, RJ. Thanks, Myra. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching KSAT News at 9 tonight. That is all our time. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.